Alright guys, Papa Pepper here once again. More of 50 days to understanding the end times more accurately. This is day 40. This is part 5 of my two witnesses portion of the book. So we're going to wrap this part up today. See what you guys think. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. But if they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. John chapter 15, verses 18 to 21. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. Two non-Olivet Discourse passages testify that being hated for his name's sake is a characteristic of believers from the beginning of Christianity, not just for the supposed future Jewish believers. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall see, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He shall send his angels with the great trumpet, uh, the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Matthew chapter 24, verses 30 to 31. And then they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of earth unto the uttermost part of heaven. Mark chapter 13, verses 26 and 27. Two witnesses record Jesus coming in the clouds and having his angels bring believers to him within the teachings of the Olivet Discourse. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Joel chapter 2 verse 31. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. Acts chapter 2 verse 20. Two witnesses testify that before the day of the Lord begins, the sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. These passages, coupled with the concept of two or more witnesses, have been provided to help recall some of the reasons why I believe the end times differently than the pre-tribulationalists. When these verses are taken literally, it appears that the pre-tribulational view cannot be accurate. Point number one. Two witnesses clearly state that being hated for Jesus' name's sake is a characteristic of believers from the beginning and not just for the supposed Olivet Discourse audience. Point number two. Two Olivet Discourse uh, passages or witnesses reveal that Jesus will come in the clouds, no mention of him landing or splitting the mount, and have his angels gather the living believers unto him. Rapture? Point number three. Two witnesses testify that prior to the day of the Lord, the sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. So again, as I spent a lot of years reasoning through this and I just saw the sheer volume of verses that when you use God's words, God's ways, you see what he actually says about certain things and you combine it all together. Um, this is why I just can't believe the pre-tribulational view. We've got 10 more days as we head through this to evaluate a couple other sections, but like I said, just to combine a couple verses, say, look, it says it here, says it here, says it here, says it here. Use two or three witnesses all the way through and say, here's what God clearly teaches. Hopefully this is still blessing you guys. I thank you for still uh, coming along and joining me on this. So, pop out.